Hi guys and welcome to a new video. This is a pound shop pedometer. So it came from Pound World and for me Pound World is a better one of the t of the two locally to me. So the functions with this is there's a clock on it on this pedometer. There's a step counter which is at zero at the moment. There's a miles so it records your miles and there's a kilocalories burned as well. So that's the functions. So there are changeable options that you need to set before you start using this pedometer. This specific one, the other ones might be slightly different. So you need to set your stride. So you need to go in to miles and press and hold the set button and then it comes up with the size, the length of your stride in inches. So I measured mine middle of my foot to middle of my foot and I got 24 inches. The instructions don't tell you how to measure it so that's what I got anyway and just to come out of it you press mode button to adjust it and then you just set it by pressing the set button. So now you need to set your weight as well, your body weight. So you go into kilocalories which is that one. You press and hold the set button again. So it asks for your weight in pounds now I don't know if you can see that, 210 pounds. So the way I got to that was I weighed myself in the UK. I weighed myself. We use scales in the UK that only uh, weigh stones and uh, kilos. So I asked Google to convert kilos into pounds. So mine was 95 kilos. And I asked them in pounds, what it was in pounds, and they came up with 210 or 209. So that was as close as I could get to it. So you just press set again and then it's ready to go. So let's just put it back to the time. So I was very impressed by how accurate it was for such a basic thing. It's a mechanical device inside that actually makes it work. It doesn't rely on all um, wizardry and stuff inside to make it work. It just counts the steps. So uh, I tested it on my wrist and what the manufacturer says in the instructions is you must have it on your wrist with the buttons pointing towards you because it won't work the other way. So I tested it like that. So out of 100 steps, I tested it three times at 100 steps. And I actually got 100, 101 and 102. Whereas if you put it the other way, that way, you'll find that it won't work at all. So out of three tests, it gave me 0, 0 and 0. So that's why they tell you because that's the way it works. It's designed to work that way and you must wear it that way. So the bad points were these pedometers. So BBC did a documentary on step counters and none were very accurate, even the most expensive ones. Don't assume more expensive will give you a more accurate reading. Mounted on your wrist will count wrist movements when driving or moving your wrist to see the time or check the step counter. So every time you move it, it could potentially count. Let's just check, you know, every time you move it, it's giving you you can hear it, I don't know if you can hear it inside. So what it is, is it's, there's a weight inside. I'll show you at the end of the video anyway. And you can see it's quite, you can hear it. And every time you hear the noise, it counts up. So it is accurate, so long as you make sure you leave your arm by your side so it can count footsteps. Because it will count both, because it will feel the shock of your foot hitting the floor. If you want to count steps, maybe mount it on your ankle as it will count footsteps only, but only half, so times it by two. It might not fit... It might not fit ankle, as mine was 21 centimetres and I was on the very last hole, which is there, so it's, the, you know, it's, um, it, it might not fit your ankle if you want to mount it on your ankle. I mean, it's good for running maybe, or something like that. So it does default back to the clock, if it doesn't have any button presses after a certain amount of time. So it might not fit. My ankle is 21 centimetres and it's on the last hole. My wrist is 18 centimetres and there's quite a few holes left. So let's go ahead and mount it on my wrist so I can show you what it's like on my wrist. Sorry about this. Let's just get it the right way. 
So there is a problem. It's now on my wrist. Let's stick it back to mode. Back to time. So that's mounted the correct way. I haven't done it up yet, but where I would have it done up, I would have about four holes remaining on the strap. And my wrist is 18 centimeters, if that helps. So what happens when you do it up? I don't know if you can see, but as I as I do it up, what it does is it tries to push it out of the silicon, and it actually succeeds in doing that. So as you do it up, it will automatically. The more you do it up, it will try and force it out of the silicon sleeve. So let's go ahead and take that off, if, so it doesn't fall out. Just bear with me. So as you can see, it's it's easy enough to push in, but if it if it pops out like that, it's likely to fall out completely. So you just pull it and get it back on. Just bear with me. So it's back in the silicon sleeve. So that was a bad problem for me with it. Right, so just bear with me. Sorry, I'm just checking. So it's difficult to read on the top of your wrist because you have to turn your you have to turn your wrist up like that. So so underneath for me let's just pull that bit off sorry underneath for me is the better fit because you can just see it just by looking at it so on the bottom it's easier just bear with me I'll just lock it off on the bottom it is easier for me there we go let's just let it focus On the bottom's easier for me to get it back under your sleeve basically so um, what happens because it's so bulky is when it's on the top you have to constantly wiggle it to get it under your sleeve and that gives you extra ca extra step counts basically so on the bottom your sleeve's naturally hanging down so it's easier to wiggle it back into the uh, back into your sleeve so because it's quite a bulky pedometer obviously it's uh, let me just move that out of the way. It's quite a quite big because the silicon thing that holds it is um, is quite thick. So it's uh, not a normal slimline one. If they even exist, I couldn't tell you. So if you tighten the strap, like I said, too much, the plastic part pops out, which I can re reproduce there. So as you're tightening it up, you can see it's opening the gap. And then eventually it just naturally pops out. So it's not a fantastic design. Um, so I know they do watches where they're moulded into the strap. So it might be worth getting a pedometer if they even do them that are moulded into the strap. So they can't pop out like that. So this might be a good or a bad thing if you want to use it for something else. I mean you could potentially put it in your sock or something like that on your, on your ankle if you didn't want to... Um, if it didn't fit, if the strap didn't fit. So this may be a good thing or a bad thing for you. So I understand now, after looking into this and thinking a bit, so I understand now why the manufacturers of high-end pedometers can't get the step count right, because some of them are only three quarters accurate. So because they have to guess what your arm is doing, which accelerometers and G-sensors they use, so they, they use accelerometers and G-sensors basically to, to try and guess what your arm's doing and then they use software to decide what a movement is and this is why they don't work properly because you could be you could be opening car door, locking your door, walking up the steps, you could be you know, you could be doing anything, brushing your teeth and that'll count as, as steps. So they've got to try and work out what is a footstep and what isn't. So it also has a clock as well, which I'm showing you there. You find the pedometer if you find the pedometer not very useful. So I'll I'll leave a link in the description. Um, if you can't get to a power shop or they've run out uh, to a similar product, and I'll just put a search term in the top and copy an eBay page, and that'll give you all the results, and you just decide which one you want. If there's any different ones or bigger ones than this one. So let's go ahead and. Uh, show you the instructions so this is the uh, 
This is the box it came in from the pound shop. So work, trademark, LCD wrist, pedometer, that's the code. This is just a basic box for transport. So that's the batch number. And the uh, the import company that brought them in. So that's the size of the box it came in, that it was stored in. Let's just go ahead and show you the very, very basic instructions that came with it. So let's see how close we can get and it focus. It's going to take a while to focus, sorry. Generally when it's too close it uh, doesn't want to focus. We'll get there eventually. It's getting old, this camera. Even though it's brand new. Come on. There we go. It's finally, finally. I'm sorry about this. Why it takes so long to focus. And now it's focusing exactly where I started it at. So that's the specifications. And that's telling you how, to how it fits on your wrist. So the button spec there. And that's where I found out about a just wait and stride. But that's all it says. You had, I had to work it out for myself, so M stand for mode, adjust weight and stride, S stand for set reset. So the operation is there. So it'll count to 99,999 steps. So the battery it takes is an AG10, one piece. Do not dispose of batteries in fire, it's obvious that one. It does say in there, never attempt, uh, do not, do not take to bits because it will break. Uh, I have taken it to bits and they're not fantastically easy to get back together. So if you want to take it to bits, you're more than welcome, but you probably won't get it back together. Do not, yeah. <laughs> so there is somewhere in there it does say that. So that's the very, very basic instructions. There's nothing else on the back. So it doesn't really tell you anything there. Just bear with me, sorry. Let's just put that in the in the screen, get the focus on. So that's them done. So let's go ahead and uh, open this to show you exactly how it works. So like I said, it easily pops out, which is a, a flaw with it really. So you have to open it to change the battery anyway. See if it'll focus. It does take a long old time. Come on. There we go. So this is the back. There's only two screws holding it shut. Let's go ahead and uh, undo them. So I'm using a PH0 screwdriver. Let's see if it'll focus. bother anyway it's a ph0 screw in this it's uh, you've got to be very careful when you open the back of this because I've already done it once so let's go ahead and always open it with the face with the back facing upwards so that's what's inside let's see if it'll focus come on So there we go. So that is a very, very fine spring basically that, that sits on those teeth on that balance. So if I put my thumb on there, the finger on there because I've had issues with it in the past. So you can see that moves up and what it does is it completes the circuit there and that gives you a step, that gives you a count step. So this is why it just tells you to work to only wear it one way because if you're wearing it the wrong way it's forcing against the bump stop and not going up to connect against the uh, the contact there so there's a strip of holes there so that I would say that spring that wire spring is very close to the thickness of a of spider silk that's how fine it is so if you do take it apart and turn it upside down like me it will fall off and you will have to try and put it back together 
So to get the whole back off, you take those three screws out. There should actually be four, but what they've done is actually saved a bit of money by only putting three and time. And that's where your battery goes in there. Let me just put the finger on there. So your battery goes in there to stop it moving around. It goes and gets held in there in place. So yeah, it's just a weight basically. And let's, uh, let's set it to mode. So that's the way it needs to go. So you can hear, as you can see, it's counting. Yep. So that's the way it needs to go, which will otherwise, if you have it the wrong way, it won't count at all. So it's quite a basic design, really, but basic works well. You know, in the three very, very small tests I've done, so long as you make sure your arm's always down at your side. You know, just work with it. If you want a cheap pedometer that counts your steps, then this might be the one for you. Why waste 50, 100, 150, 200 quid on something that probably won't work as well as this does and does too many things. This does the very basics and and it's just got a metal weight that just moves up and down and that's the noise you can hear when it moves. So you can actually hear it counting. And then that metal spring there goes around creating tension to force it back down away from the contact. And that's it. So uh, hopefully if you want a pedometer, uh, maybe go for a quid one. You know, um, save a lot of money and it might actually be better than what's available out there at the moment for a lot more money. So thanks for watching guys and uh, check back soon. Cheers.